When using Jupyter Notebooks, once I'm finished an experiment, I need to tell weights and biases by calling wandb.finish. If we were just running a Python script, the weights and biases run would be automatically finished and stop tracking metrics when the Python script has finished running. Because notebooks behave a bit differently, we need to call wandb.finish to explicitly finish the run. Here, we are starting the run with wandb.init and logging data with wandb.log and then calling wandb.finish to end the run. We can do the same thing by changing it to use a Python feature called context managers, where we use the with keyword and indent the code. This will call wandb.finish when the code within the context manager is finished running. You might recognize this if you've ever opened a file with Python by calling with open. Okay, so let's start experimenting. I'm going to go off and try a few things that I think might improve my model. So I'm back in my weights and biases workspace after trying a few things to improve my model. We can see any log metrics are shown on the same charts and we can hover over each line and see which run produced that data. We can navigate over to the runs table and see all of the different runs data in the one table. We can also pin columns to the runs tab on the left and navigate back to our workspace and see that metric persist alongside our run names. We can also interactively organize these runs. In this case, I'm sorting by my loss. Also, like we did in the runs page, we can interactively edit these plots or create new ones. And we can also delete panels if they're not useful. We can also do custom analysis within weights and biases. Say we want to see a plot to analyze how training time is affecting the model performance. We can do this analysis to try and discover additional ways we can optimize our models. Being able to rapidly iterate on experiments is a huge advantage when it comes to being an efficient machine learning practitioner. Although we encourage rapid experimentation and quick feedback loops, there's no substitute for thinking deeply about what you want to experiment with. Now you can see how you can use weights and biases to make sure you're productive and efficient while doing so. Now that you're up and running tracking your experiments with weights and biases, what next? Beyond experiment tracking, Weights and Biases has other features that help with different problems when trying to work on machine learning projects. From collaborative features for teams to evaluation tools when it comes to understanding your model predictions. In the next video, I'll touch on some of the things that are possible so that you know to learn more about them whenever you need them.